Hi everyone and welcome to today's Matplotlib tips video. Today I'll be showing you how to add shading to your figures. I personally love to add shading to my Matplotlib figures because I think it helps with the communication aspect. So we'll be doing exactly that in today's video and I'll also show you how you can use shading to create some more interesting shapes. So let's get started. By the way, all of the code I'm about to demo is available on my GitHub page. So let's start off by importing several different libraries to help us out here. And I'm also creating some X and Y data just so that we can plot them. Here's a scatter plot of those X and Y data. And let's go ahead and add some shading to this figure. To do that, I reference the PyPlot module. And now I'm calling up this function called AxeVSpan. So the V stands for vertical, meaning I'm going to create some vertical shading. And so my two inputs here that are required are the minimum value for X and then the maximum value for X. Once we hit enter, you will see now that we have vertical shading spanning from X equals 10 on the left up to X equals 13 on the right. So our X min and X max are required arguments for this function. We also have two optional arguments. That's Y min and Y max. So one thing to note about this, when I add in y min, this 0.5 is not in terms of my actual y axis. So the 0.5 is referencing going from 0 to 1. So 0.5 means I'm just putting the shading on the top half of this figure. So the really interesting thing there is that the x min and x max are in terms of the data units. The y min and y max are going to be on the scaled units from 0 to 1. We can also pass in a y max if we'd like. So this again is scaled units. So now we have shading from 50% up to 75% of our y axis. If we'd like to include horizontal shading instead, we can do that with this x h span function. So this function basically flips everything. Now our two required arguments are y min and y max. So let's say 11 up to 14. That puts shading on the top part of our figure from y equals 11 up to y equals 14. Like x v span, x h span also has two optional arguments and now these are going to be x min and x max. So let's try x max. If I set that to be 0.5, now we're going to have shading just on the left part of our figure from x min equals 0 all the way up to 50% of the x axis. And of course, we can add in the x min if we prefer to do that. So we're definitely going to need some styling to make that shading look appropriate. Let's see what your options are. So let's take a look at an example. Here I've created dates and prices, and as you can see, the dates object contains five different dates. So we're going to plot out these prices across these dates. So let's create a plot of these data. I'm basically just using pandas to plot these data as a line plot with markers on each date. So what I want to do now is add in shading so that we can tell which part of this graph is 2019 and which part is 2020. To do that, I can just go back up to my code and add in one more line. So x v span. And since my x axis is actually in terms of dates, I need to input two dates into this function. So we'll do that with date time. And my first date is going to be 2019, November 10th. And I'm going to make that span up to the beginning of the year. There we go. Okay, so right now I have quite the large blue uh, rectangle on top of this graph, which is not super helpful. One thing I could definitely do is change the color of this shading. So to do that, there's a color argument and let's switch this over to light gray. All right, that's a lot better already. So now we can see what's 2019 and what's 2020. One other thing I might do is actually adjust the transparency of this shading. Sometimes that helps, especially if you're working with a darker color. So that's with alpha, and let's set that to be 0.5. All right, so this is looking really, really good. One final thing that I might do, just if this is my figure and I want to communicate exactly what I mean by each of these two regions, I actually have some text here that I'll just uncomment. And this text will just specifically add 2019 and 2020 right onto my graph. And if you want to see more about adding text to your figures, you can check out my past video all about that. The shading that we've created are actually polygon objects, which means there's a lot more styling that you have access to. So let's try out a couple other options. So this shading actually can return an object. Let's call it P. 
and P is actually a polygon object. So what that means is we actually have several different properties we can use about this polygon. So one of those is to set hatch, and this allows us to add a pattern to our shading. So there we go. So sometimes this can be really useful if you want to shade and add a pattern to part of your figure. So far we've just been shading rectangular regions, but you can actually shade more complicated shapes as well. We will need to switch over to the fill between function, so let's take a look at that. To demo fill between, I've created two new NumPy arrays. The first one is just values for x that range from negative 5 up to 5, and then the second one are 20 minus x squared. So let's go ahead and try fill between. So that comes from the PyPlot module, and we call up fill between. So the way that this works, the first value that I input here should be my x values. And for the second value, let's go ahead and just put in those y values for now. So if I only supply an x and a y, matplotlib will assume one more additional argument, and that will be the zero axis here. So for all of my x values, I'm actually filling between y equals zero and y val. But I can also change this. So now I'm filling between y equals negative 5 up to y val. And I can make these as complicated as I'd like. Here I have two different sine waves that I'm going to be filling between. So you have many of the same uh, styling options here as well. You could add transparency, or you can even add your patterns right to this object because it's also a polygon. So thanks so much for joining me. If you have any additional questions, feel free to leave me a comment below or you can check out another video in my Matplotlib Tips series. See you next time. Bye.